Hey guys, DFA here, welcome back to the channel and yes, this week I am not alone, I'm actually taking a look at the Ranger and I'm very glad that Terry accepted to do that with me. So you're going to get two videos, one on my channel where we will take a look at the stats of that thing and a couple of gameplays that we comment together where I explain how you play it and he actually explains how he plays it as well and we discuss. And another video which will be posted on his channel which will complement the first one nicely and the outcome of the games it's going to be significantly different so I encourage you to check out his version as well. I will of course put the link in the video description and in the comment section. So without further ado let us take a look at the stats of that thing before we deep dive into some gameplay together. And we're going to compare the Ranger with the other CVs at tier 7 because tier 7 is where it starts actually getting serious in terms of CV plays and the Ranger is very American. It's still an American ship so it's kind of middle of the pack in terms of um in terms of protection, concealment is excellent, 8 km, so you can get actually fairly close to the action with that thing. Maneuverability is pretty average, bon, voilà, it's, it's still an American floating brick. Uh, guns, we're not going to talk about them too much because that's only the Germans have gun at that tier, so that's a <laughs> it's, a no, it's a no question. So what actually sets the Ranger apart from the other CVs at tier 7? Uh, there are two things. First one are the dive bombers, uh, which are it's fairly average. You get like uh, squadrons of five. Uh, they, they reload not very fast, like 17 seconds, so it's, it's not a big DPM. These are not really damage machine. Uh, if you see, it's actually one of the lowest at, uh, at tier 7. But they do set a lot of fires. Fire chance is ridiculously high at 45%, and I actually think that you can increase it uh, in, uh, in, your, in your rated bonuses, if I'm not mistaken. And so you're almost guaranteed a fire with that thing on every wave. And so what you're going to do to, to play those things correctly, because that's how you have to play the American line, is you don't have a lot of squadrons to control. You're going to always try to go for fire and floats. So you attack the nearest target and you go for fire and floats. Because the torpedo bombers, uh, they, they're not as good. Uh, you, you can scroll down so we can see the, the torpedo yep. bombers. Sorry. <laughs> um, Slightly. They, they're not as good as the dive bombers, uh, so they're not going to set as many floods, but uh, if you can get it right, then usually that's immediately 10,000 extra damage for you if you manage to get a, a battleship permafloated at tier 7. And, and typically you, you get quite a decent amount of, uh, um, of hit points on your bombers, so it's, uh, it's, it's, they're fairly survivable, it's a fairly forgiving uh, platform. And then you get fighters, which are also, yeah, they're pretty decent as well. Uh, so they're, they're not siphon levels, of course, because the siphon is stupid. Uh, but they're, they're, they can deal a decent amount of damage. Uh, and uh, and essentially, yeah, you, you get like 15 of them. Squadron of four, so you can mess up four times before you get deep in. So you have plenty of room to do mistakes. So that's what actually would... Um, would differentiate it from the other platform. It's a, it's a, it's a good learning platform, the Ranger. It's a fairly easy line to pick up, and it, it sh I think it should always be the first line to start playing C with the American line, because they, they, it, it can teach you everything that you need to know. So uh, I, It can teach you everything you have to know about the game. I actually started way back uh, playing the Japanese line first, just because I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah. and. Back then, there weren't many carrier players, so mostly I was just playing against bots. Mm -hmm. So I actually, I actually do have to hear you in my personal account, but I've just never played it against a human, so I would completely die if I tried that. <laughs> so, <laughs> the the US line yeah. definitely sounds more, but the the Ranger is, I think, the first one where it, it's starting to get serious at tier seven. Why, 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 why indeed that, that's and and you see that, uh, for example, if you compare it with the here, the Americans, they have a defensive mindset. Uh, and even the Saipan, you know, it's, it's super strong fighters and, and, and limited offensive firepower. Here, it's, it's just the opposite. It's just the opposite. It's, uh, it's relatively weak defensively. Uh, it's absolutely not survivable. That's only improving as of, as of tier 8. Um, and uh, really, if, if, if you make one positioning mistake with that thing, it's game over. Ranger, it's a bit more forgiving. It's a bit more forgiving, and concealment is also very good, so you can get away with, uh, with a few mistakes with that thing. So that's why it's a good line to, to start picking up CVs. The, and the line that I actually got on... Also, sorry. Wait. No, go ahead, go ahead. The line that I actually got on with best was the German line, simply because I, I can forget about the planes and just be an AA platform and... Uh, move myself into an aggressive mm. position, which is much more what I like. <laughs> oh, 
Why? Why? Because the Germans, they will require you to get actually fairly close to the actions and to manage your hit points as well, because otherwise you're not going to have the same, I would say, carry potential as the other line. So they're, they're actually fairly well balanced. I really, I really like the German line. Uh, it's it's very well balanced, and, and, and I think they've done a good job of creating some kind of an identity through the lines. It's the same with the Soviets, which I've started grinding. Uh, it's it, They also have a very specific playstyle, a very good identity. So overall, I think they've done a good job with CVs. I mean, they're all overpowered as of tier seven. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I know everybody but, but, says but, that, right? Everybody says that right. that carriers are super overpowered. But um, personally, I like. I'm, a, I'm. I would say I'm a cruiser main, and I like AA cruisers. Mm -hmm. And I actually actively, if I play against the carrier, I actively hunt them because or the, the planes rather, because that's literally there, what I'm there for. So if I play a, a, a Seattle or a Worcester or Des Moines, then um, I will, or even a Brooklyn at tier seven, I would actively go and, and chase the enemy air wings. So uh, right. I don't mind them too much. You, you know, the, the thing is, uh, and um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very factual. When I look at my stats in, in carriers and the rest, I play all the lines. I play all lines, uh, all, all ship lines, destroyers, cruisers, uh, maybe not heavy cruisers, not so much, but I, I play all the rest. And, uh, and concretely, uh, the, the stats in CVs, it's, it's just so much easier to get an MVP with those things and to really influence the game uh, than it is, for example, with the cruiser, because cruisers are, for me, by far the hardest class to play correctly. I think it's the most interesting class to play, but it, it's just really hard when you, because you make one mistake, you get punished. In a CV, you can get away with quite a few mistakes before you're actually getting punished. So, so that's yeah, true. Wargaming should definitely do something about CVs, but yeah, I'm not sure when that's going to happen. It's it's not like you you don't see that popping up on the on the community contributors Discord every week. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I would say the the biggest issue when I have when I play carrier, the biggest issue I for me is the multitasking and the, the screen layout, yeah. because so often I find that um, I, I have to take care yeah. of my torpedo bombers, which means my fighters get captured, mm -hmm. or I accidentally right. press the return to carrier button while I was trying to realign yeah. my torpedo bombers, and then I completely missed the drop. This is the sort of thing right. that, that just gets me frustrated a right. little with carriers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and the, the thing is, you know, it, it, it's quite uh how, how can i say that uh it, it's it's why you have to start with the americans because the yeah. i mean if you take the saipan uh i would say the american tech tree line huh, because the saipan is really the worst example uh, saipan you need you have four squadrons to actively manage and that's actually how you counter the saipan because the the saipan player unless he's really really good and then you absolutely have no chance against him <laughs> If it's better than you, forget it. Just just uninstall the game and come back five minutes later. <laughs> but the, uh, but the, you you constantly micromanaging everything. With the Ranger, it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to do. Uh, that doesn't mean that you will never make mistakes, of course. I mean, I make mistakes all the time with that thing as well, but but it's 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 happening a lot less often. Uh, for example, the Graf Zeppelin, like you make one mistake with your torpedo bomber squadron, you lose it. Then you, you cannot. You only have nine of them. You cannot send a full squadron again. So it's really unforgiving. Um, here you make one positioning mistake, get a bit too close to the action. A Roma can delete you in 15 seconds. Mm. No problem. So bam. So yeah, the Ranger. It, it's it's a little bit on the safe side for that. And you know, I, I mean, you you never have more than two squadrons to manage across the whole line because your dive bombers they're just going to reach their target no matter yeah. what. So it's Fair always enough. one fighter squadron, one torpedo bomber squadron, and then one or two dive bombers. So, so that's the only thing that you have to manage with them, and that's why they're a fairly, uh, fairly good uh, learning platform. Um, I actually also started with the Japanese line, and then I moved back to the American line when I started to hit the wall at tier nine, uh, because Taiyo and Akuryu they're completely different beasts, and it's it, it's above my skill level. They're above my skill level. I cannot manage these things correctly. But the other lines I can sort of manage them, so that that's all right. There I can I can get away with uh, with them. But yeah, I mean, you know, um, the theory, I understand it, but there, when it comes to the execution, I mean, I think the Japanese are still the, by far the most mm. complicated ones to get right. And starting with these, it's ultimately, it's going to get you frustrated at some point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do you want to start looking at some gameplay? Yeah, we can take a look at some gameplay. Um, well, let's go. 
So that's actually, I, I've actually chosen this gameplay because uh, when you look at the matchmaking screen, it's pretty much a horror story for ADCV. CV. Uh, it's every single ship on the enemy team, it's pretty, pretty good AA, like North Carolina, Monarch, uh, San Diego, even the DDs have pretty good AA for that tier. So, so yeah, it's actually a good showcase of how you can get away with a number of mistakes when you're playing the American CVs. And um, so typically what you're what you going to do with those things, you're going to send your planes in the air because you don't have too many things to manage. We're going to see what the enemy CV is, uh, is going to do. Uh, I, gen I would have loved to get some footage against the Saipan, to be honest, but I've, I've only managed one battle against the Saipan and, uh, and it, it wasn't super, super interesting, to, to be honest. So there, the first thing you do is your fighters, they're meant to be shooting down enemy planes. So I'm not going to bother too much about the enemy CV. Uh, the enemy series fighters, I'm going to simply focus on taking down its bombers. And you see what, what I was telling you a bit earlier, huh? so the, the dive bombers, they're immediately going to set up a fire. On, on anything bigger than a cruiser, you guarantee the fire. And so what I do is I'm wait until his damage gone, I'm sending my torpedo bombers away from the action, and I'm coming back like 10-15 seconds later. And hopefully I can actually get one torpedo, a couple of torpedoes to hit that San Diego. And sure enough, that's where you get lucky. <laughs> you get lab. the flooding with your one torpedo. So the guy, it's, it's, it's already like he's lost half of his life after one minute. So that's, well, that's, that's the thing. And there, that, that's interesting as well. You see that I was not paying enough attention to my fighters. They got baited. The enemy fighters is following my torpedo bombers and I'm simply going to have them fly over my team. And its fighters get deleted just simply by following my, my torpedo bombers. So sometimes you make a mistake, but you, you, you don't have too many squadrons to manage. So you can actually focus on, on really getting it right, getting it correctly. I'm going to be bullying that San Diego to death because honestly, you, you, some people would say, yeah, but why are you not attacking the DD that's on the left DFA? Uh, it's actually a German one. So it's it's one of these uh, mind-laying DDs, if you, <laughs> if you see what I'm talking about. So it, it, it's absolutely not dangerous. And uh, and concretely, I'm not super, super worried about it, to, to be honest. Um, so I might actually, yeah, I'm actually focusing. Yeah, uh, I know what I know what I was, yeah, I know what I was going to say. So essentially what, what I don't send my dive bombers on DDs. Uh, I don't send my dive bombers on DDs generally. Yeah, that's that's a really good solve for like four hits. That's really nice. Um, but because they're generally going to miss, you're not guaranteed a fire. So you will have the difficulty to, to play the damage over time game. So I'm usually saving my torpedo bombers to go against DDs. And when I know that the ship has been um, set on fire or um, hit previously by my team, then, then I'm going to send the two squadrons there. But generally, DDs, I'm not focusing so much uh, on deleting them with American CVs. Um, because that's not really what you're meant to, to go against. Um, typically, you, you're going to pick the ship that's actually the closest to you, the most isolated one, the most dangerous one. Um, here, for example, yeah, that San Diego is chasing one of my DDs, which he just deleted, but I think it's going to be his last move of the game. Yeah. And so that's an easy kill, and that's completely changing the situation on the left flank. So, so that's, uh, that's a good one. The North Carolina, you see that is flooded. So that's a good candidate for a, for a carpet bombing run and could maybe, maybe get a fire on it. I've recorded that thing one month ago, so I actually don't know <laughs> if I'm going to get a fire on it. But yeah, I mean, it, 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 when, I, when I'm reviewing it now, and it's, it's funny that we're doing this together because I, I, I see how hectic it's actually looking. And <laughs> it, it is. I'm, I'm just like, okay, I'm trying to think what I would do and I would probably be half, lost halfway yeah. just trying to torpedo that, uh, that destroyer yeah. through half of the game. Well, but you know, if, if, if you're not able, I mean, by the way, we, we, we did get a fire on that North Carolina in the meantime, oh, so, nice. but I think it damaged content, so it probably had a reset there. Uh, so I'm not really worrying too much about the mine, uh, the mine layer, because yeah, he was <laughs> trying to, yeah, it, it's, go, it's going against the British battleship that yeah. usually doesn't add them very well. <laughs> I saw Monarch, he's got HE loaded. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's not going to end up very well for the German guy, but uh, yeah, there I managed to get a flooding, so so voila. So we, we, and you see that I'm, I'm pushing forward, huh? I'm, I'm trying to, to get a bit closer to the action, there you go, that's another one. 
And, um, and yeah, there are, I make a mistake with my fighters. I'm going to lose them. That's fine. I see that I still have seven in the hangar, so absolutely fine. No problem. No worries. I mean, game is an easy win anyway. So, so yeah, it's, um, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good example on how you play that thing yeah? in terms of target selection, in terms of uh, really playing the damage over time game. Um, trying not to, to, to do to, well, how do you say it? Yeah, I mean, the Takizuki have, have been leaving it alone for a big part of the game, but now I think it's uh, it's time to, to actually finish it. So maybe I'm going to go for the Hanjo, I don't remember, to be honest. Yeah, I'm well, going to be greedy. The Aki is all the way back in friendly cup, uh, in his friendly cup, so he's yeah, not really yeah, doing an awful yeah, lot yeah. in terms of threat. Why? No, 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 it, it wasn't the most neutral. I mean, I think you have to be a little bit clever about this, huh? so you're not always going to attack uh, and remove the enemy DDs uh, mm. from the battle first, because first you have to be able to do it, that's number one, because if you're not able to do it reliably, consistently, uh, you're going to be wasting uh, an insane amount of time trying to get it right. So, uh, and, and you're not going to be super useful to your team doing that. Um, typically, what you want to do against them, and I've published, uh, I think, a fairly good guide on that, is you want to to have them look at somebody else. You have to 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 try to see where they're actually not paying attention and come from that direction. Yeah. So there, this guy is just trying to run away in a straight line to dodge as many shells as he can from the cruisers and the DD that's behind it. So it's an easy target. It's not going to, to dodge. If he dodges my torpedoes, it means it's going to die from the cruiser. So there, it's, it's a fairly, fairly easy catch for me. But you really have to identify those situations. And, and yeah, well, there you go. So, um, and we get a nice medal. And then that's the one where we kill one from each class, I think. Eh? So, yeah. That's, yes. Um, uh, I mean, when you look at the matchmaking, I thought like, okay, if the enemy ranger knows what he's doing, <laughs> I'm going to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, so this one went quite well, and you see two floats, five fires. Uh, how much time do we get? Like uh, maybe 10,000 damage of fire and float. So it's it's okay. It's fairly decent. Should have gotten a bit more, but I mean, it is what it is. Uh, so there you go, that was the first one, which went quite well. There is another one later on, which does not go as well. We're going to talk about it as well. And so th uh, this one was a battle right. where I did reasonably well. And uh, mm -hmm. I think we're, we're, yeah, we're top tier here and uh, kicking yeah, that off. Yeah, yeah. But, but I'm, well, I'm up against started. another ranger. So Yes, yes, yes. It's actually fairly common at tier 7. You don't meet too many Saipans, actually. When you when you're playing solo, so it's, it's actually still relatively safe for uh, for tech three CVs tier seven a lot 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 uh, more than what you would expect. So the first thing I'm I'm trying to do here is scout both of the flanks. So I want to scout north because there are two destroyers, and I already know that one of them is going to go down the western flank because right, right, I know this right. map pretty well. So I'm sending everything uh, I'm sending everything up north first to scout this area, and then I'm uh, thinking of just using the fighters to to go across and try to find the other DD over here at this right. little island. And did you check in your team which uh, ships, for example, were likely to to be setting enemy ships on fire? Or, uh, uh, ah, because it, not that's at the yes, thing uh, you want to yeah. Oh. So, so there's the scorner. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing what you said not to. I'm sending the dive bombers after the yes. scorner. You, 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 you're sending him a, a letter. You're yes. telling him essentially like, I'm coming for you. Yeah. Yes. So, and so he, he's, he's got nothing better to do. <laughs> so yes. yeah. Now, now he knows. Now yeah. He, he, Predictably. He <laughs> but um, so so yeah. Uh, when, when you when you watch it afterwards, it's relatively easy to spot these mistakes. But when you're playing it, it's oh, just yeah. like. Uh, it's, it's one of those you things. Have a so the Jervis, yeah, it's going to use HE, but it's not going to set too many fires. I'm looking at the other side. Of, ah, there's one that has been set on fire, but he hasn't damaged yeah. on it. So, so that, that could be a target for you. That could be an interesting. Ah, I yeah. think he did. So I think so, he did. He so double that, counter double fire. That's why I'm sending the dive bombers over yeah. there. And yeah. um, yes, I'm now yeah. moving towards yeah. a slightly more aggressive position and trying to get to oh, uh, to that oh, island oh. ahead. Yes. Why? In terms of positioning, so you're actually getting away from the ship you're targeting there, huh? So that's maybe something you want to be a bit mindful about. Uh, uh, not necessarily, because we have we have a destroyer. I think we've we've got half the team on that flank, uh, and there's there's a Caracciolo who's already half dead, and we've got the Scorner. Why? I think was it the Scorner, and we've got a DD down there. So I'm 
I'm perceiving the threat more on the on the right flank because our destroyer goes. You see, the Caracillo is already yep. almost dead. Uh, our destroyer is going the long way, which means that battleship there is up against two battleships and one destroyer, and that's why I'm moving north to support that flank. You're anticipating the next fight then. Okay, good. Yeah. So now what you're going to do, ah, uh, but that, that, that's an easy catch. That's an easy catch. It's next to an island, so this guy, it, <laughs> it, 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 its movement is a bit more predictable. So, so yeah, you're going too fast, you're going too fast. It's a little <laughs> bit. The, the, the rule you want to follow is, uh, well, but not bad actually, quite nice. Uh, but the uh, the rule you want to follow is if you're like three seconds away from hitting the mm. destroyer, you want to put it like three cones away as well, and and there you will generally be on target. So uh, two seconds, two cone, one second, one cone, etc. So that's the general rule of thumb when you're trying to hit destroyers. Um, and there actually, so the black scone, it's almost done. Yeah, the, the flank is actually, yeah, it's quite open, so the, these guys are not going to last very long, but uh, I think there's no, yeah, there's just an island between you and the action, so that's quite okay. The New Mexico, you're safe because it will take him forever to get to you, so you can actually fairly safely delete the Ashitaka, so that's, uh, yeah, it's, I think it's a very good position. So, so Ashitaka, I think, is going to die to torpedoes. For, for some reason, these yeah. guys haven't been pushing. I thought they would push down this flank, so yeah, the Ashitaka has actually right, died. Right. Which means I didn't get that killed. It's just the New Mexico left. But uh, oh, the Jervis, I'm, I'm trying to send my fighters to support the Jervis because the yeah. the enemy carrier is, is totally going for him. Yeah, and you're going to send them fly over the uh, Mexico, so be careful with that. Yes, uh, I, I, I realized that, but um, and now they got baited. <laughs> 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 but the uh, but the New Mexico, I mean, it's it's a super easy target there. It's There's a super easy target. So that yeah, New Mexico. Let's, let's yeah, let's uh, just punch him in the face. I mean, the, the, your left flank is safe. Exactly. One cruiser against the cruiser and another battleship. So now it's just about farming damage and then uh, because the game is still pretty even actually. So this could have gone this could have gone either way so easily if they if they had pushed down this flank because we had nothing on this flank. But because of that destroyer who was doing the long way, they all started suddenly mm -hmm. focusing on him. And yeah. uh, the same, the New Mexico could just push down and kill me here right now, and I wouldn't have the time to get him done. But they are all focusing on that Jervis. So as long okay. as he's still alive. Oh, yeah, and, and <laughs> now he's yeah, dead. He but but you know the, the thing is, I mean, it, it's the it's it's the ideal position you're in because you're just just about um, outside your concealment range, so it cannot detect you. You're safe, and and essentially you're going to take like 10 seconds, I see 12 seconds to get to to, the, to get to target. So that's a really really good position. Uh, even so, if he even if, if he was to able to spot me, uh, I have an island between myself and him, so he wouldn't be able to do anything. Voilà. And New Mexico is a standard battleship; it's taking doing 21 knots. So. Oh yeah, it's probably going to take him forever to get exactly. To you, so. And, voilà. so you're pretty safe with that thing. So let's talk a bit about the fighters because uh, well, what do are you making them fly over the New Mexico again? No, I, I was um, trying to bait the enemy fighters, and I'm not sure if I did it or not. But I I think now I have them. But I think I I, I, I yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> it, it went the wrong way. <laughs> Oh, but voilà, that, that's a good example of fire and flooding and damage over time, huh? because this, this, and if you can flood him now, then yeah, you, you've just added like 15, 20,000 to your damage tally. So that's, uh, that's good. Um, so interestingly enough, I have beaten the enemy fighters, even though we were fighting over in New Mexico. Um, I'm not sure how, but... Yeah, that's that's kind of surprising. There, there's a fair amount of energy. Yeah, well, voilà, that's amazing. That's really the, the playbook for the American series. Huh? So you have a... A poor, lonely target, not too far away from you, and uh, it's just damage gone, so you, yeah. <laughs> you can actually enjoy it. And yeah, you go. I'm sorry, baby. Well, it had to be you. So. <laughs> and I think now, just now, we're actually ahead in points. Uh, so it, oh, it was yeah. it was really super close, but we're, I mean, we're capping, so... Uh, yeah, super close. But the, the, the thing is, uh, and I mean, we were just reviewing this for the first time together, huh? so I might have missed a number of things there. Um, but the, uh, yeah, that's the Black Scone, which you, you so gracefully uh, <laughs> invited at the beginning of the game. <laughs> I would say that, and I think, yeah, their CV is on the other side of the map, so that's where you're going to delete him. Um, but typically, um, I mean, in terms of target selection, it's, it's all fine, uh, apart from that, that, uh, that thing that happened with the Destroyer. Yes. 
Um, and and voila, fire and flood, it's just going perfectly. So yeah, I'm gonna even get a Citadel Did on the Did you see CD. that? Can you finish? Can you see that? Can you... <laughs> almost, almost. Uh, you, you didn't get it. You didn't get it. <laughs> I, I'd actually. Is it common to get uh, to get citadels with the HE bombs? I thought that this was more of a thing for the Germans. No, well, no, it's not. Un it's pretty uncommon. It's pretty uncommon. Um, yeah, and the, the the new American commander with the uh, with the death from above skill. It's not. Yeah, it's not going to be super useful. So yeah. So th this is. Uh, by no, the way, this is not a fully set up ship. So this is uh, my personal account. So the the ranger there is just. Um, right. Uh, just, well, I think uh, like I a 7-point commander or something. Well, voilà, but I was also using my personal account, but I think I had a level, I think I had a level 11 commander, something like that. So it, it was almost fully kitted out. Um, so so uh, at least for, for me, okay. reviewing uh, this, I think I got lucky there, in, in that the, the enemy team hasn't really abused uh, their, their, or hasn't really used their opportunities of, of pushing. The destroyers haven't been particularly aggressive. So if, if any of these destroyers would have tried to chase me down mm. or if, if the battleships had pushed that flank the right flank somewhere in the middle then i feel that might have uh, gone the other uh, way uh, no I'm, I'm, I'm not sure because the, the the thing is so you you still have quite a lot of room to maneuver because you you were more or less in the center of the map huh, close to your cap and uh and then the enemy destroyers would have two choices either they chase you that means they end up going in a straight line to catch you because you, even though I mean the CVs are they're actually they have a fairly decent speed and the, the, the black scone it's not fast uh, I think there was a Jervis Jervis is also really not fast so so concretely what that means is they're simply following you in a nice straight line and they're <laughs> inviting you to push them in the face with torpedoes so and if, and if they decide to to break away from you then you're getting away with it because with eight kilometers concealment you're going to disappear fairly easily from uh, from them so it's not a bad idea to get them to chase you. It's not your preferred scenario, of course, but it's, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, destroyers are easy to deal with if they move in a predictable pattern. And that's where they get predictable. So you, you saw the, the one you topped, the Scone, uh, which was close to the island. Mm. That's, that's a fairly predictable pattern. It doesn't have too many options to evade your torpedoes. It can either accelerate or, or slow down. And usually they don't slow down, so so they, they they're going to to eat torpedoes when you see that kind of situation happening. So so yeah, but I mean it it, it I think no it. it I, I did okay. Fair. I think I did okay. So, yeah, that you one. Did, <laughs> you did, did very well. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's good. Uh, but uh, how how do we how do we close this now? So we, because that's going to be the end of the first part. Now we've spent a bit of time talking about uh, on over an Excel sheet. We're going to, to take a look at the second part then? Yep, uh, let's do the second part and you find that over on my channel. <laughs>